Well, it's been a lazy Saturday afternoon here. I, we had lunch and then went and did a little bit of shopping and a little grocery shopping. And that may actually be another video I may decide to do if it comes out okay. I've come home now and doing a little bit of review of some of the comments here. And I thought that a few of the uh, um, questions that have come up online would be worth a, a quick little video here. And I'm just gonna go through them quickly and try to answer some of them. Some of these questions and comments that you guys leave under the videos are very helpful to everyone. So when I try to answer them, I guess I'll try to do some videos where I can go over them and share the answers with the rest of you guys as well. So here's one, for example, in the apical gauging video where I talk about the apical diameter and the size, one of the questions is, well, if you're using a usual base sealer, uh, if you're going to a size 50 or larger, like I did in this video, are we essentially having questionable tug back? And should we then go to use of M MTA as an apical plug? Of course, as an MTA, they're talking about using a calcium silicate cement as an apical plug. But I think the misunderstanding here is that uh, if you go to a larger apical diameters, that you're going to have a problem with tug back or that then all of a sudden the diameter being too large, you're going to have issues with creating a seal. I think this stems from a misunderstanding of the term apical diameter. And that is because there are several people around the different programs the different key opinion leaders in endodontics that use that term loosely in different ways. And I think it's just worth a quick little drawing here. I've got my little thing to do a little drawing for you guys to explain what is it that I'm talking about uh, when I'm talking about apical diameter. Because historically, if you look at a tooth here, and if we have our apex, we all know that we have on the apical side, we have what's called an apical constriction. And at the point of the constriction, you have your minor diameter here, and then you have a major diameter, which is the diameter right over here. The minor diameter is the smaller one. The major diameter is the, um, the bigger one. And the, the, the issue is when we're talking about apical diameter, we're not talking about, or apical gauging, we're not talking about anything past the constriction. Historically, some of the um, endodontists were thinking that, well, when you're creating a apical preparation size, the only way that you could be sure that you have cleaned to the radiographic terminus or to the end of the root is if you literally actually blow through the constriction and then you basically have no end here and the diameter of your root end right here, that is the diameter of your master apical file. Master apical file would be right there. Now this, while is a predictable approach in some people's minds, creates a massive, massive problem with the reality that you are actually removing the constriction as a result of that, then you no longer have any kind of a barrier for this piston-like effect of files going up and down in the root canal, not to push debris out apically into the periapical area and cause postoperative pain. So whenever we remove this constriction, we end up having problems with apical seal as well as problems with um, potentially extruding biofilm, hypochlorite and mechanical trauma to the apiary apex that is associated with post-op pain as well as potential intraoperative bleeding from the apex as a result of this uh, apical perforation. So this really, while it used to be vogue back in the day in the 90s as a very predictable approach to making sure that you have the right apical length or working length, since the advent of improved levels of apex locators, we now know apex locators are far more predictable than radio, red, regular radiographs in terms of telling us where that apical uh, constriction is. And as a result, we need to kind of rely on the apex locators to know where the constriction is. So our, ideally, apex locators are going to tell us, and it's obviously they have a certain level of accuracy, they're not 100%, but they're telling us where the constriction is. So when we're talking about apical gauging, we're not talking about the constriction. We're talking about an area coronal to the constriction, which is inside the canal. And that's a key and critical factor. So when I'm talking about enlarging the apical 
preparation to a certain size, I'm talking about actually enlarging with this type of a shape of a kind of a Washington monument inside the canal, removing this part of the dentin here and this part so that you get good apical gauging. But I'm talking about not really touching or destroying the construction. And that's a very, very important and critical demarcation. Now, you may say, well, that is a very, very small histological entity. And the answer to that is yes, correct. Endodontic therapy is a very precise job where your hand movements for a half a millimeter extra can actually make a big difference in terms of your patient's potential post-op pain and all kinds of problems. And that's why accuracy and meticulousness is a key criteria of a good endodontist during instrumentation so that you can maintain the integrity of that apical constriction without blowing through it by being a half a millimeter short or long. And to that extent, it's very important for you to be also very fastidious and very, very um, kind of meticulous about maintaining your working length, constantly checking it on your uh, ruler with, and having a true ruler between yourself and the dental assistant and really being accurate to a half a millimeter between yourselves when making measurements. To that extent, you should also make sure that the stoppers on your files are also very accurate and there's no wobbliness to those stoppers so that they don't cause any inaccuracies with your reference point. So all of this really comes down to you paying um, a lot of attention to your working length and being true to that length up to a half a millimeter and making sure that you have solid and reproducible reference points, very nice stoppers that are not wobbly and are not loose, and that you constantly check with your a true ruler your working length every time you're putting a file into the tooth because these stoppers can move from uh, your motions and that could change your working length. And it only takes one motion to blow through that construction and the moment you do that is you now have to deal with bleeding from the apex and all kinds of other problems. That would be a whole other um, type of a tutorial or a video to talk about what do we do to deal with that kind of bleeding that happens as a result of either apical constriction or leaving tissue inside the root. So enlarging the apical diameter to its true size means that if you have a natural anatomy that is, for example, this type of a shape, so meaning that you naturally have a much larger apical diameter. If you're unable to touch these spaces, chances are that you might be leaving a good amount of tissue in this area of the apex, and then you're going to fill your root canal with your gutta percha, and what you have done is you've trapped some tissue inside the space right against the gutta percha and the sealer, that contains potentially biofilm and all kinds of other antigenic substances that could maintain a certain level of inflammation or infection, if you will, outside the root, and that causes persistent symptoms on that patient. So that's why having proper gauging of the apex is important, and how uh, you being able to gauge it inside the root canal, coronal to the constriction, is very important. So when I was talking about preparing a root end to a size 50 04 rotary instrument, I wasn't talking about blowing through the constriction and then enlarging it to a size 50. I was talking about first recognizing where the constriction is in these teeth using an apex locator and confirming it with measuring that a couple of times and then moving your way back up from there to be able to find out at what level is the file really touching the, uh, um, the walls and then clean it to that extent so that you can ideally can get rid of this bit of tissue as well so that once you do end up filling the scutta percha over here that you no longer have trapped any additional tissue against these walls or potentially biofilm that could cause failure in the long run. Okay, this took a little bit longer with one question, so maybe I'll make another video where I talk about another question that I come up as well. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.